Hi, welcome to my talk. I'm Shotaro Kohama. I'm a machine learning platform engineer at Naotari. Today, I'm going to talk about efficient model exploring and continuous delivery with polyaxis and the cube flow. Let's get started. First of all, I will explain what Meltali is. Meltali is a customer to customer marketplace where customers can sell their items to the other customers. Meltali is available in the US and Japan. Today I'm going to talk about the Meltali US machine learning platforms work. One of our unique challenges is pricing. The four sellers, if the item price is too expensive, it takes time to close the deal. On the other hand, if the item is too affordable, the seller cannot make a profitable sales. To, to help to solve this problem, we use these machine learning uh, models. We call that system a price guidance system. That price guidance system consists of the two features. One is the uh, price suggestion. The price suggestion feature recommends a viable uh, price range when a customer makes a listing on our marketplace. And the second feature is smart pricing. When a customer uh, makes a listing on our marketplace, customer can decide the flow of price. And the uh, smart pricing feature gradually and automatically update the item price to the floor price and then that the item will be promoted to the potential buyers. To decide item price range and floor price, we use this machine learning model. Our machine learning model uh, takes the item title, description, and category, and so on, and suggests the uh, prices. We use uh, machine learning platform components behind this uh, price guidance system. So in the latter part of this presentation, I will dive into the uh, machine learning components. Here is the today's agenda. First, I will talk about the general machine learning project life cycle. And then I will explain that how we use the uh, polyaxon and the cube flow pipeline at Melkani. Lastly, I will talk about uh, how we build the machine learning platform to utilize the uh, polyaxon and the cube flow pipeline efficiently. Let's move on to the uh, first part, machine learning development side life cycle. Generally speaking, machine learning projects are highly iterative. First, we need to decide the task to solve that with ML. And once we decide that task, then we'll start the collecting training data. And we get the enough training data, we can start the model exploring phase. Through the model exploring phase, uh, we uh, decide the uh, First, the model to deploy to the production, and then we can start the development of uh, uh, microservice to deploy a uh, model and integrate the uh, uh, microservice with the other systems. Uh, once we, de we finish deploying the model to the production, and then we can get the actual feedback from the production cluster. And then we can go back to the correcting data phase we can train the ML model with the actual feedback data and that this iteration will keep going. Uh, as a machine learning platform perspective, uh, how we can accelerate this iteration is the key to the success of the ML project. And uh, we believe we can be able to accelerate these iterations by automating manual processes with the open source ML ops and DevOps tools. At Melkali, we use these open source tools for acceleration. For model exploration phase, we use Polyaxon. 
for the Axon user, I want the uh, ML Ops 2 to support the scalable and reproducible model exploration. And for continuous training, we use Kubeflow pipeline. Kubeflow pipeline allows us to manage the end-to-end -end ML workflows on top of the uh, Kubernetes. And last, uh, for continuous delivery, we use Spinnaker. The Spinnaker is able to trigger a uh, deploy pipeline when uh, a new image pushed to the registry so that uh, we use Spinnaker for continuous delivery. Uh, in this talk, I will focus on the polyaxon and the Kubeflow pipeline parts because in Kubecom uh, North America 2020, Snap Pink team gave a great presentation about how we can use the Spinnaker for ML Ops. So we use a similar way to deploy that ML microservice to the uh, production so that I will focus on the polyaxon and the Kubeflow parts uh, in the later presentation. Let's move on to the polyaxon section. Polyaxon is an ML Ops tool to support a scalable and reproduce model exploration. The polyaxon has a YAML specification called the polyaxon file. On the polyaxon file, we can define the steps to build the Docker image for training, and also we can define the, the commands to run the model training. And also we can put the, what parameter we will explore as a hyperparameter tune zone. And Polyaxon has a UI to visualize the results of hyperparameter training jobs. As you can see on the left below image on this slide, we can uh, see the what parameters were the best as a one matrix. Uh, and Polyaxon file has all the information to reproduce that experiment that other engineer can easily reproduce that experiment. And also it allows us to take over a project easily. That's a big benefit. Here are the steps to run the hyperparameter tuning job on the polyaxon. First, we'll define a polyaxon file. And next, we'll create or modify the code to train the model to decide what ML library or ML model architecture we'll use. Third step is to upload the polyaxon file and the code with polyaxon CLI. And then the polyaxon will uh, build our Docker image to run the training call and it will uh, schedule the hyperparameter tuning job in parallel way. That's the how to run the polyaxon job. In this role, uh, my favorite point is that polyaxon helps us to build a Docker image. Uh, with this feature, a developer doesn't have to build a Docker image manually or doesn't have to wait for continuous integration every time you modify the code. It sounds a subtle thing, but it's, for me, it's very important to keep my concentration in the development role. This feature prevents interruption from happening in the development, so uh, that's uh, my favorite. At the military US, we have been using Polyaxon for more than two years. With less than 10 ML developers, uh, we've created 175 projects and we've done about 87,000 experiments. And also we have metadata around this experiment on the Polyaxon. And we can see the what parameter was used for this experiment. So that's amazing. Next is Kubeflow Pipeline. Kubeflow Pipeline is a one of open source uh, workflow engine, and it features especially for machine learning workflow. Comparing to the other workflow engine, Kubeflow Flow Pipeline has a metadata store. With the metadata store, Kubeflow Pipeline stores outputs 
of the each stage so that we can uh, store the uh, what the parameter we used in the training step and also we can store the results of evaluation steps. Kubeflow pipeline UI has the feature to visualize that metrics so that we can visualize the confusion metrics of the evaluation step on that web UI. Kubeflow pipeline also has a Python SDK. Uh, with that Python SDK, we can uh, write the workflow as a Python DSL. And also, the Python SDK provides a way to define the reusable component. So we can create uh, one component to share the among the pipelines. At Natali US, we use Kubeflow pipeline to achieve continuous training and continuous delivery. Kubeflow pipeline automates the manual operations regarding the model exploration phase and the deploying the ML model to production. For example, in the one one workflow, the first step submits to the polyaxon job to get the training job. And the next step is to submit to the polyaxon to get a uh, training model. And the third step to submit the polyaxon job for model evaluation. And next step, uh, if the metrics looks good, then the Google pipeline will create the Docker image to serve the new trained model and push it to the Docker registry. And then Spinaka uh, will detect the new Docker image and then it will deploy to the production. Uh, that's the way we achieve the continuous training and deployment. With this approach, we can avoid the re-implementation in transition from the model exploration phase to the continuous training phase. For example, we don't have to modify the code to access the training data, or we don't have to modify the code to store the metadata. Something like that. I believe as a result, we can save the local uh, development time. The last three, uh, as a platform team, we built our tools and set up the configuration integration to be able to write such end to end workflow easily. And I feel uh, these three points on this slide are very important for the efficient development. And in the last section, I will highlight these three points especially. The first one is monorepo for Kubeflow pipelines. We built a monorepo to manage the multiple project Kubeflow pipeline to share the best practices and knowledge. And the second point is uh, we define the YAML manifest to manage the resources on the Kubeflow pipeline and the polyaxon. And it enables us to achieve the infrastructure as called way resource management. Third point is the Kubeflow pipeline component to submit the polyaxon work. We built a custom component to submit the polyaxon job from Kubeflow pipeline. So with this component, every developer doesn't have to write a code to log in uh, for the action and submit the job. And yeah, that's the uh, point. Let's deep dive into them uh, one by one. Uh, here is the structure of the monorepo. Uh, we put the Python package to the share the lightweight component. Lightweight component means uh, uh, one of way to create a Kubeflow pipeline component. Kubeflow pipeline SDK has a feature to convert a Python function to the Kubeflow component. So we don't have to write a Docker image and a YAML file for the component. With that feature, we built it for the Axon Kubeflow pipeline component. And also with that Python package, we can share the util functions, like setting up memory and CPU resources, 
or and also we can share the constant values for and variable names or secret values easily. And uh, we set up the continuous integration with this monorepo. When we push a code to this uh, branch GitHub, and then this continuous integration will detect the change of pipeline. It automatically compiled and uploaded to the development process. At that time, continuous integration will use the branch name and the last commit hash. With this way, we can standardize the versions of the Kubeflow pipelines. Uh, we have a development cluster and a production cluster. And only when merging the pull request into the main branch, the CI will upload to the production cluster. With that, we can keep the only code past the code review on the production cluster. Uh, that's the one of the benefits of that. Uh, Next thing is project manifest for Kubeflow and Oriaxin pipeline. We define this YAML specification for resource management. CI will create the Kubeflow pipeline experiment and Oriaxin project with this YAML file. And then we don't have to manually create the, these resources on the UI, and then we can keep the consistency between development and the production environment. This manifest also has the uh, owner's field. With this field, we can manage the uh, permission for code review. And uh, it enables uh, each team to approve the pull request to modify the related code. Uh, that's the uh, uh, way we use uh, this uh, project one. The third thing is polyaxin Pro pipeline component. These are the steps how Pro pipeline polyaxin component works. At the first phase, and any the container from the private repository with the secret, which stores the GitHub token. And then the main container log into the polyaxin user with a, a secret, which stores the polyaxin token. And the third step, the main container submits a job to the polyaxin through the polyaxin API. And then the main container tells the logs until the job ends. And last, the main container fetch the uh, results of the job and output the data to next step. Here is the example of the archive flow pipeline we use for the continuous delivery and training. Right side here shows the actual uh, compiled archive flow pipeline. We have a blog post about how we use them for continuous training and deployment. That if you are interested in that, please take a look at it. That's it. Here is the takeaway uh, from my presentation. First one is the polyaxin suites the model exploration in a scalable and reproducible way. Monorepo and the continuous integration for Kubeflow pipeline works well for us and it allows us to keep high efficiency and consistency. The custom Kubeflow pipeline component for Polyaxin enables us to move forward from model exploration phase to continuous training phase seamlessly. Thank you for listening. Let's move on to the live Q&A session. Bye.